I invite Reverend Suzanne Katchke from New and Renewing Churches to join me here at the table. So you work with New and Renewing Churches. A little bit. Yeah. And you enjoy that. You yeah. do a great job at it. Thank you. So tell us a bit about the mission of that area of ministry and particularly as it relates to evangelism. Before I do that, I want to take a moment and I got the mic. Here we go. I got you. Before I do that, I want to take a moment and if I could just recognize my team because none of it happens without them. If I could have my staff stand, my new and renewing church's op team and the district developers, would you all please stand and get a round of applause because they deserve it. They are the ones out doing the work. So thank you so much. The mission and vision of New and Renewing Churches is to uh, resource, mm. equip, and empower existing congregations and new congregations to do new things to reach new people for Jesus Christ. We kind of have a two-fold approach. We want people to think like church planters. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone's called to be a church planter, but everyone can learn church planning strategies, which would be helpful. And then the other thing is for all of us to understand that if we're going to reach new people, we have got to get in touch with our community. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been in church planting? Wow, my goodness, my entire ministry, pretty Your much. entire ministry. My entire ministry. I, I can remember, I, I didn't grow up in the church, and so um, I didn't become a Christian until I was 30, but I can remember sitting in a church one day thinking, man, someone needs to plant a church for people like me. Mm. Mm. And so you did that. And so I did that a couple times. Along with your husband, Michael. Yes, along with Michael, yes, a couple of times. Yeah, yes, yeah. And you are... Uh, very involved in uh, planting here in North Alabama and also in continuing to grow a relatively new church. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. ma'am. What's the most ex exciting part of church planting, Suzanne? Well, for me, it's very personal. Mm. Mm. I grew up in the Bible Belt. And in the Bible Belt, you think you'd get invited to vacation Bible school. I was never invited to vacation Bible school. My family desperately needed the love of Christ. And so for me, it's just a passion within me to reach people. Um, and I think in today's world, it's needed more than ever. Mm -hmm. um, we have got to get out there and get out into our communities. And we have to understand that if we're going to sit in the church and wait for them to come for us, to us, we're going to be waiting a really, really long time. It's going to require us to know that, you know, we can't do things. We can't all be the church for all people. It's okay to go after a specific demographic. We've got to, you know, in our lives, we want to do self-examination and look at ourselves. But I think we also need to do some church examination. Mm -hmm. What's going on in our churches that's irrelevant to people outside the walls or maybe is outdated? Or maybe it's even boring. We, we can be boring sometimes. Can I get an amen? And so, uh, and so um, you know, just to, just to understand that there are so many people out there that are in desperate need of the love of Jesus Christ. I don't know, I don't know about you, but, I, but I, most Sundays I'm inside the walls of a church. But recently on a Sunday morning, I happened to be out. Have y'all done that in a while, been out on a Sunday morning? There's a lot of people not in our buildings. A whole lot of people. And when we think about the brokenness of the world and the hope of Jesus Christ, we have that gift. And who gets a gift and just keeps it to themselves? We want to share about it and tell others about it. Mm. Mm. Thank you. And Suzanne, we've been talking about how in North Alabama this year, at June of 2023 to June of 2024, is a recalibration year. And so as... As someone who has such a heart for reaching new people for Christ and also for revitalizing churches and starting new ministries and new congregations and new worship services. What do you envision that each one of the people in this room can do to be a part of this recalibration year? Well, I think one of the first things we can do is admit that we don't have all the answers. 
No one has all the answers. I recently went to the National Developers Conference, and the theme of the conference was Better Together. Mm -hmm. But the real theme, the unstated theme, y'all ever been to a conference, the theme is one thing, and the real thing happened is some. The theme was Better Together, but the unstated was theme is none of us know what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We can, we can figure it out together. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's mm -hmm. what we need to do. And, and, and what we can do is, is that we can start really getting in touch with our community. We have the lovely Faith Hooper who, um, you know, is, we, a lot of us have had our mission insight numbers and we know how many people are with a radius, but not all of us have had our mosaics done. And Faith will give each and every congregation concrete next steps, action steps you can take to reach people outside the walls of your church. So say more about a mosaic. What is that exactly? Well, it just tells you what's in the community. Um, I had faith. I also serve a local church, like many, like many of you, and I had her run it for our church. And we discovered that in our church, we were trying to run all these long-term Bible studies, and you know they go on. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. You join it, you're in it for the rest of your life. Do they put cobwebs? You know what I'm talking about. You're in it forever. And we discovered through mosaics one of the recommendations that the mosaics show to us is that the people in our area prefer seminars, and so we switched to a seminar. Um, format, and I can't even tell you the increase that we've experienced because of that. And so it's, 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 it, can be, it can be the littlest of tweaks that can make the biggest different, difference. I think a lot of churches, we think we know the community because we live in the community, but we know a segment of the community, and so we've got to open our eyes up to what's happening in the walls outside the doors of our church. You know, I remember a similar experience that I had when pastoring a church a number of years ago, we were getting ready to start a contemporary service to parallel our traditional service. And thankfully, uh, we did Mission, Mission Insight, and we discovered that the people in our community were not interested in a contemporary service. Now, we maybe should have known that because this community was known uh, for being historic, being hosp hospitable, and also for horses. So the three H's, but the historic piece uh, helped us to really uh, have a clue that contemporary was not that community. The, the, a contemporary service would have not succeeded. Yeah, I think it's really important for us to understand that we are in an era of innovation and experimentation. If you ever wanted to just throw spaghetti up against the wall in ministry and see what sticks, now is the time to do that. And if we're going to fail, we can fail forward. But we can't just keep talking about it. We've got to implement some of these things. We've got to go for it. We might fail. We're going to pick each other up. We're going to dust ourselves off, and we're going to keep trying. So just please try something new. So, back to Mosaic. What does an individual in this room need to do uh, to learn the information about their community? You can go on the conference website to New and Renewing Churches. You can send me an email or Faith Hooper an email, and we will get that started for you right away. Excellent. Yay, Faith. More work. Yay. <laughs> yay. Here's another question for you. What is the biggest challenge mm. that new and renewing churches is facing at this moment in time? Well, I got this job. I got a phone call about this job. Are y'all ready for this? In March of 2020. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of challenges. I mean, we've been through a lot as people. I think sometimes we forget that. We went through a global pandemic. We went through a time in our country where there's a huge political divide. There's a divide over racism. We have issues with the economy. Technology is evolving at a rate that we don't even know. And then just for that, on the top of that cake, we layered on a bunch of disaffiliations. And so it's been a really, really hard time for us. But now is the time. So the challenging part has been people have been kind of frozen. Mm. People have been frozen. They've been afraid to move forward. We've been so consumed by the things that are swirling around us. And that's definitely been a challenge. It's, it's a, a challenge when we have grant money to offer you and no one applies for the grants. You got an idea, let's go for it, let's do it. It's challenging when we offer trainings and we have to cancel them because enough people don't attend those trainings. 
But what is really, really exciting in the midst of that is that I'm seeing is that people are beginning to wake up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for waking up. And as they're waking up, I'm seeing mo a lot of that activity coming through our district developers. I mean, I can't say enough about these district developers. They've been on the ground. That was mm -hmm. our intent to put mm -hmm. them on the ground. They've been on the ground for almost, about six months. But the things that they have accomplished in six months and the seeds that they have planted, it is a new day in the North Alabama Conference in church planting, and I'm so excited for what they're going to do. And you should be excited about it, too. I'm so appreciative of their work. Yes, I am excited about what's happening through the work of the uh, district developers um, under your supervision. So that's, that's all um, great. So in terms of challenges, you mentioned grants. Give us an example of a grant application that your team would look at and say, yes, we'll sign off on that. Well, we, we are willing to try anything at this point. If you've got an idea to reach a new demographic of people, let's do it. I mean, we have, every, we have a sports ministry going in one church. We've got a church that's doing mental health ministry. We've got a church that has a ministry going at a steakhouse, uh, any of those kind of things. But if you want to add another service, start a fresh expression, you um, might want to plant a church. Maybe it's been burning in your heart like it was burning in mine all those years, and I was afraid to mention it. Don't be afraid. Step in to what God is calling you to do. We want to support that work. That's great. So where can one it's find It's all on the conference a website. grant application on, on the, conference the conference website. On the conference website, yes, ma'am. Okay, and they can talk to you or the district superintendent That's or the right. district developer. Yes, because if you call me first, I'm calling your DS. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's good, yeah. that's good. What do you think about that, DSs? Okay, <laughs> thumbs up, wonderful. You've already talked some about your hopes. Um, just share in a nutshell, what is your hope for North Alabama uh, between now and next year at this time? What would look like a win from your perspective related to new and renewing churches? A win for me would be for us to wake up and understand that there's a whole world about people out in the world who are counting on us. And a win for me is for all of us to leave annual conference this year and all of us decide. Just imagine, I believe there's 305 churches that, mm -hmm. that remain at this point. What if every single church did one new thing? Just one. Just one new thing. What a difference we could make in our communities. And that would be would, my biggest hope. What would be the motivation for doing one new thing? Well, first of all, Jesus said ah, so. That's the right answer. Um, I was hoping you'd say that. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, you want to watch people come alive in their faith, let them watch someone who didn't know Jesus come to Jesus. Mm. That's where we start getting fired up about our faith, and we need to get fired up about our faith again. Mm. Mm. Is there anything else, Suzanne, that you would like to share with this great group of people? Well, I would say that laity, we need you. This isn't just a clergy thing. We need you. If you feel like you want to start something new, let us support you as well. And pastors, we need you. And listen, I know, I know back in the old days, church planters were skinny jeans, glasses, as he was talking about this morning. They were hip and they were cool. But listen, that's gone, gone, dead. It's gone, okay? Don't have to do that anymore. You know what you need? You need to have the capacity to build a team. If you can build some people around you, we can, we, can work, we can help you work through it. It is a sad day when the people outside the walls of the church refer to the church as hypocritical, judgmental, and hateful. Yeah. Mm. And I think we need followers of Christ who approach people outside the walls of the church with humility and respect, and instead of telling them what they need, ask questions. And I think we need to do more of that. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Please express your appreciation. Oh, no, no, I'm not done. Oh, you're I'm not, not done. I want to okay. say one more thing. <laughs> well, you've got another minute and I know, 48 I, I, seconds. You're taking you're like good. two minutes. You're no, good. Go. No, everybody else got their time. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> but there were two of them. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, but still. It's, yeah, no, no, this is important, and I just remembered this. So okay, it's good. Not, it's not Go. on you. It's on me. Here's, here's, my, here's my what I really, really help me if you would do. Go back into your context and call a meeting with no agenda. And the only agenda would be to answer two questions. And the first question is this, where are they? Why aren't they there? And the second question is this, 
what are we going to do about it? Because if we love people like Jesus loved people, we will do something about it. And the Apostle Paul called, told us to become all things to all people so the gospel must be preached. It's time for us to try all things to do something new to reach people who need the love of Christ in their lives. Beautiful. So here's a take-home assignment. Sometime between now and when we reconvene in the morning, I would ask that each pastor and their lay member talk about those two questions. Where are they? And what are we going to do about it? Please express your appreciation Thank to Suzanne. Thank Isn't you so she much. great? Thank you. Isn't she great?